Verily, every soul will taste death, and you will only be given your full compensation on the day of resurrection. So he who is drawn away from the fire and admitted to paradise has attained his desire, has attained success. And what is this life of this world except enjoyment of delusion? <laughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Allahumma laka alhamda hatta tarza Wa laka alhamda idha radhit Wa laka alhamda ba'da al-ridha Allahumma laka alhamda hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan Fihi yalka bijalal wajhika Wa azim sultanik Allahumma laka alhamda hamdan yamla al-mizan ولك الحمد عدد ما خط الأقلام وأحصى الكتاب ووسعة الرحمة اللهم لك الحمد على ما أعطيت وما منعت وما قبضت وما بسطت واللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيد المرسلين صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم كل نفس ذائكة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم الكيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع غرور Verily, every soul will taste death and you will only be given your full compensation on the day of resurrection. So he who is drawn away from the fire and admitted to paradise has attained his desire, has attained success. And what is this life of this world except enjoyment of delusion? What is death? I'm sure some of us think of it on an everyday basis. Is death a total annihilation? Or is it simply severing the soul from the body? When the soul is separated from the body, what happens to them? What happens to ourselves? Does our conscious, does the conscious come to an end when the body dies? Does our awareness continue to function? Do the dead feel enjoyment and pain the way the living do? Can the awareness of a living man whose soul is locked inside the body Compare with the awareness of a dead man whose soul has been released from his body? Of course not. The living are aware, as we all know, because we're a part of this world. And the dead are aware. But there is a difference. And there is no way to compare them. Death is not pure annihilation. It's merely a movement from one world to the next. When the dead man feels the bliss or punishment of the grave, it does not mean that he is alive in his grave, needing food, clothing, and so on like we need in this worldly life. Soul permeates all the parts of his body as it did when he was in this world. The soul returns to the body again in a way which is not the same as this worldly life. So that the dead man can be questioned and tested in the grave. We can get some idea of this likening death to sleep sleep is known as the brother of death it's the lesser death even though there is of course a natural disparity between the two in sleep a man's soul comes out through his nostrils and travels until it comes into the presence of Rabbul Alameen Allah if the sleeper is in a state of purity the soul prostrates before its creator then it may encounter the world of dreams or meet with the souls of people who have died. But what is it in fact faced with is a page of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge of the unseen containing the good or evil. He has decreed for this particular human being if the sleeper is truthful, generous and pure 
and someone who does not concern themselves with stupid things during the time that they are awake and go about their daily lives. When his soul returns to him, it conveys to his heart the truth of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let him see. When this happens, it is called a truthful dream. In a sleep, the soul can also move freely about the world and meet with other souls if Allah wills, who are still alive and gain knowledge from them. Allahu A'lam. Some what it learns is true and some false. The false parts is normal, normal dream from the chatter of the soul, what goes on through their daily lives. One just speaking to themselves mentally and the drama that they go through. If the sleeper is a liar and likes what is false, the soul still rises to heaven. During sleep, moves freely about the world, meets with other souls if Allah wills. And learns true information about the unseen, if Allah wills. However, while the soul is returning to the body, it meets the devils in mid-air. And he mixes the truth with the false, like he does when a person is awake. Then when he wakes up, the person is confused about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left him with. And consequently does not understand it, only remembering what shaitan, the devil, showed him. Those are confused dreams. The proof for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Allahu yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtaha, wal-lati lam tumut fi manamiha, fayimsak al-lati qada alayha al-mawta. وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّ إِنَّ فِي ذَٰلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُومٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the souls at the time of their death and those that do not die He takes during their sleep then He keeps those for which He has decreed death and releases the others for a specific time Indeed, in that are signs for people who have thought in the sleeping state the soul does not completely leave the body as it does in the case of death, but remains inside the body not leaving it to move freely through the heavens. An example is the way the sun rays leave the sun but it's still somehow attached. Again, the ray of the soul reaches out to the heavens and then turns again to the body when the sleeper wakes up. We have not much knowledge of the soul as it's mentioned in the Quran. It, the circuit belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. In the case of death, the body remains in the ground while the soul is in the interspace between the two worlds. And interspace is something which separates two things, heaven and earth, or this world and the next world. In other words, it is the period between death and resurrection. It's called the Barzakh. We'll get into that in future lectures, inshallah. In other words, it is the period between death and resurrection, as we mentioned. The bliss or punishment of the interspace is not the same as the bliss and the punishment of the next world. It is something that happens between this world and the next world. Despite the fact that the soul is in the interspace between the two worlds and the body is inside the earth the two are still connected consequently the bliss or punishment happens to both we have likened this condition to the sleeping state but naturally there is a distinction in sleep the soul subsists fundamentally in the body it emerges as something like a ray to the heavens so that the sleeper has a dream in which he feels either happy or miserable, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. The soul experiences either bliss or punishment in the sleep. In death, the soul fundamentally in the interspace, not in the body. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires bliss or punishment for the soul, He connects it to the body. It is in the heaven. In death, the soul has no choice but to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's either bliss or punishment for the soul. I would like to tell you about a hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam spoke about. One of the people of earlier times thought that if his body 
was burned to ashes and then some of the ashes were cast some of the ashes into the sea some into the desert some into the wind he would be saved from the punishment of the grave he therefore told his children to do that however Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the sea the air the earth to gather his ashes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered all his ashes he told the man to get up and he was resurrected in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah questioned him what made you do what you did he replied the man to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I feared you ya Allah but you are the one who knows best because of that Allah forgave him taking the action that this man did could not eliminate the punishment or the bliss of the grave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of all things there's no escape from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should all prepare ourselves to meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day we will be held accountable so let's put forth our good works Allahu a'la wa a'lam Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen